Hey y'all, thanks so much for joining me today. I wanted to talk today a little bit about a comment that I got a couple of weeks ago. It was in the midst of the turmoil month that I had, aka January, and I read it and I just felt really sad. Um, so I've had it on my mind for a little while and I decided that I wanted to do a video about this comment. I'm going to leave it up to the commenter if she wants to comment below and say that it was her, but I'm going to summarize it here and give my thoughts on it. The commenter said that she was feeling like losing her natural red hair was a loss and that even her nickname Red would no longer apply. and. Having a red-haired daughter myself, I'm going to put a picture of her right up here, I can totally see how much of her personality is wrapped up in her hair color. The commenter went on to say that losing that core part of her identity along with gaining weight had made her feel invisible. She said she feels invisible, y'all. And while she doesn't dislike the color that's coming in, she laments that all the gorgeous gray-haired women that we see tend to be very young looking, they tend to be thin, they tend to be very stylish, and they look like they're wealthy. And I wonder who all this rings a bell with, because I know it certainly does with me. Every time that I have looked around at gray hair pictures that are celebrated. A lot of times it's colored gray. It's hair that's colored gray. It's not hair that's natural gray. It's young people. Um, a lot of young people have done gray hair, which I think is really cool. Don't misunderstand because I think that the young people doing the gray hair has made it even um, easier or nicer or whatever. I mean, it's it's a trend. It's a thing. And so, it's, of course, it's easier to do it when it's a thing. So, I appreciate it. But we ha also have to look at it on the older people as well. The older people if it's celebrated on not just the young and 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 it is on some older older people but i completely get what she's saying with this i mean i've talked about it several times on different videos i was the dark haired girl i sometimes don't even recognize myself at first when i see photos of myself or videos or whatever i don't recognize who it is we made a picture at thanksgiving with the whole family and my hair in the sunshine looked so light that it just didn't look like me. And I was just startled by seeing that picture. So I get it. I see exactly what you're saying when you're talking about the young faced, thin, wealthy looking, celebrated gray hair. I get that. But remember, we get to determine our own value. We are the ones that get to do that. And we can't wrap that up in a characteristic. I'm not less valuable because my hair is no longer dark or because I'm no longer a size four or because I don't wear designer clothing. I mean, heck, who isn't cute in a pair of overalls and sandals anyway? Maybe even tie a bright bandana in your silver hair. I mean, isn't that cute too? If I feel like I'm less valuable because of these external things that's different than what society views as value, then I'll treat myself like that. And if I treat myself like I have less value, then others may follow suit. I've also spoken before about how difficult it is for me to lose weight. I have to work a lot harder at that to take care of myself. I have to invest that time. And we don't hesitate a lot of times to invest time into someone we love and cherish to help them achieve, achieve their goals. We as women don't. We do that all the time. But somehow we feel it's selfish to do it for ourselves. 
I constantly struggle with this. I even said in my January video that pretty much all the self-care had gone out the window and it took longer than that to even start it back. It's a habit. It's it's something that, that I struggle with all the time. And there was a good reason for my self-care to have gone out the window, but it's back now. I'm behind on all life stuff, but I'm scheduling my care in again with everything else. I set it up just like an appointment and I keep that appointment if at all possible, just like I would keep an appointment with anybody that I respected and valued because I'm important too. I think one of the first things we as moms and wives and girlfriends and just women in general do is we push our own needs aside to help others. And while that's good and even necessary in some cases, I always go back to what they tell you on the airlines. When the oxygen drops, you put it on your own face before you help anybody else. We can't help others if we're not our whole self. It's a life lesson, y'all. It's things we have to learn. Now understand that I'm not condoning selfishness or putting myself above the needs of other people. I'm simply giving myself the same respect that I do give to others. Commenter, I'm so sorry that we live in a time that this change is dreaded in place of celebrated. I think of all the smiles and tear streaming belly laughs that it took to get these lines by my mouth. Would I trade that to have a wrinkle free face? I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade one moment of it. I think of everything that my body went through to carry my babies and I celebrate the stretch marks and the c-section scars. I honor them because it's part of what gave me the biggest gifts of my life. I don't want to lose weight because I hate my body. I want to lose weight because I love my body and I want to take proper care of it. I want to honor it for all that it's done. Commenter, I've never met you and I don't know how old you are, but I'm going to speak to you just as if I were talking to my own daughter. First of all, how lucky you are to have been given such a defining characteristic that was such a part of your life and how sad you must feel to feel that slipping away. But I think it's important to remember that it is the internal us that makes us who we are. Look at every wonderful thing that your body has done and just realize how marvelous you really are right here, right now, just exactly the way you are. And if there's things that you want to change about yourself, then you do it, but do it only if it's what you want and do it to honor yourself and just embrace the you that you are now because you are good enough exactly as you are now. You're good enough with red hair. You're good enough with silver hair. You're good enough with extra weight. You're good enough if you're thin. All of this is just the external. You are good enough. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you so much, so many of you, for your positivity here. Every time I've put up anything about feeling iffy about my life or my dogs or my hair, all I've gotten basically is positive, affirming, uplifting thoughts from so many of you. So thank you all for that. Thank you for helping me see when my eyes get clouded with the superficial that it's our inner strength that will shine through every time if we stop to realize our true or real worth. And thank you, commenter, for being brave enough to be vulnerable. What a beautiful quality that is. I would love to hear your comments below and what you think, how hard it's been to do the transition, ways that you value yourself and how you go about 
realizing your value and keeping your value even as things change. What would you tell your daughters if they came to you with a question like this? Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next time.